Hello. <laughs> this week, what are we doing? We are. I'm with. Uh, this is Richard. I'm Robin, and um, we're talking about Imperial Skies. Uh, we've got uh, a little setup in the garage that we've done, which you've probably just seen some little footage of, which I'm rambling now. So, um, I can almost cut bits like that. You see? Yeah, yeah. A little pause in between. I think it has charm. Mm. <laughs> so what we're doing is we're doing a, a demo game of uh, Imperial Skies. We're still in the midst of setup really, and um, the setup involves making a bit of a mess here, but uh, we're sorting out our cards for the game. So I'm using the, down on the wooden stump here, I'm using these cards, which are the Imperial Skies mini cards. And uh, what we do is we put them in to, here we go, pre-prepared, these acrylic based storage systems. So as you can see here, that's what they're like. I had a local friend laser cut these you know, to set dimension for me. And uh, the idea is that um, you can put a counter. So say for example, I'll get here number 37 and put it on there. You can see number 37. So I know that this one is the number 37. And also I can put the counter on the bottom of the base of the ship as well. So the combination means that uh, you can identify your vessel on the table. We've got in front of us a kind of movable um, mounted table that we've put uh, together. And uh, this is half of a table tennis table that's just been strapped onto the top of it. And then we've used this rug. This rug is from Corsac Engineering, an American company um, who also happen to make these bases of variety of formats of base that we've got here. Uh, the idea being that uh, you can just throw down this rug and get a game on a smallish table. I think this is about what size would you say this is dimension wise the table? About is it four foot by four foot? More? Four foot by five I think it is. Yeah. Something in that order because it's half a table tennis table which is I think is about nine foot in length total so maybe it's four and a half foot by five or all of that sort of size. You can get a reasonable size game in on that for Imperial Skies and um, you don't need all these fancy bases that we've got. You can also use the smaller bases, um, which you can see here. We've got a ship on the sort of traditional size small bases. They don't need to go on these bigger ones that we've got here too. All magnetic. All magnetic, yeah, of course these are magnetic as well. So you can sort of hold it upside down and then uh, pop the beastie off or not. Yeah, so we haven't got, uh, we've got German and British ships. We haven't got them in any particular fleet construction. Um, they're just all me randomly picked out a small set. I've got a mistake in that I'm running uh, a British uh, carrier here. And unfortunately the fighters that I've got, I haven't painted up my British ones. So it's going to have actually weirdly German um, styled fighters that it's going to launch from that, even though on the surface of it, we have our British aircraft, but that's just something I'm gonna to have to ignore that I've got the wrong ones. So in terms of preparation, we need to get these numbers um, on the bottom of the basin. zoomed into this little small view you can see that's the mark grav and there's the little card for it I can see on the card that it's got a turning ruler class of D there it is which means uh, I would use the D when making a move and that counts the inches along along the length of it when you do the movement so that's it essentially basic movement rulers that you need for the game. You could cut out bits of card for these, but it's much easier to use them like this. And of course you can just flip them over for the other size. Um, 
and then when you move along the length you can just you measure up the front that's why it's very important in the game that you have a straight uh, a straight frontage to the base so that you can match that against the turning square and move it around the set amount of inches and as you can see it's a very slow curve whereas if you're using this small one which is a SA15 I believe the SA15 without jumping at the card uses the A class turning so it would make a very quick turn indeed move that around so you can see how sharp a turn that would make bringing almost instantly it's broadside to bear in this direction so the smaller ships make tighter turning moves and that brings me onto this little tray actually this is a tray which I got on eBay called a Raptor and it's designed for the mini cards so I keep my fleet cards in here obviously I'm printing a lot of them because I'm uh, using these in show games etc but um, it's very handy for storage of any kind of cards got them on eBay very easy to did I put it together I think it came pre-bolted pre together actually and I was able to just store all the cards in there and uh, also because I'm going to be scribbling on the cards you've got the uh, plastic sleeves which is the mini euro class plastic sleeve we've now got a fly in here which will be very audible on the oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> it'll be like zzz, zzz, zzz. Mm. so uh, yeah these plastic sleeves are euro size sleeves and that's an aerodrome card there are, there are ground targets in here as an aerodrome you see it has two of the medium orange class guns and four of the small um, gun class as well with those ranges so even as an aerodrome it can sort of defend itself it doesn't have many damage boxes though cam 2 here we are so let's now clear off now we've got all our stuff out so have a mini clear up So we've got our dice, we've got a big bucket of dice, and uh, you're currently not in, oh you're just I about am. in I'm the just screen, in. you're yeah. just in the screen. So yeah, these dice, which I'm sure just show you in the tub, oh, dice. up close, look at, look at that, dice. <laughs> um, but there guy. is a reason for them, and that's because the three colours, orange, red and yellow, correspond to the damage on on the cards uh, for the particular kind of weapon so the big guns are red and the medium orange and the small guns yellow so if you're rolling them you can roll them all at the same time and that's the end oh, better put something else up on there Why is one? Why is the uh, one side red and one side blue in these cards? Uh, the card size. Uh, the difference was that one side has a damage grid on, which is I'll just show it again. So one side has the damage grid like that. The other side has just the weapons, and the, the idea was that you could, if you wanted to, hide the damage. Okay. So you would mark your damage on with a marker pen. And then, whoops! And then you would be able to flip it over, and your opponent could no longer see how much damage that ship had. Okay. So that was the sort of general idea of having two-sided. Uh, so like essentially, a little zoom in here on the start of a game, where we would roll the command roll initially, and then move on to the initiative phase, assigning command and then activating. Now in larger games we've played where you activate whole groups just to speed up gameplay when you've got a lot of players but in this instance we'll just be activating one ship at a time and then flipping back to the other player because we've only got you know half a dozen ships each and it's just a general overview rather than complete detail. Uh, one of the other core things of the rules is that it's, it supports exploding dice, so essentially any rolls of six are re-rolled. And um, 
if you get three sixes in a row, the target ship suffers an internal magazine explosion. So essentially that's bad news um, for the target, especially if it's a lighter ship. And that's just reflect that you know there were issues uh, during the period that these ships were from where things exploded. Uh, you've got aircraft shooting as well, torpedo rules. Uh, over to the activation sequence. Um, essentially when you're activating an individual ship you select it and uh, then you can move it using the correct turn ruler which I've shown earlier and then you shoot it so it's basically uh, movement and shooting. When you're moving these uh, airships they do have a set speed and I'll show that on the card in small here this one in particular has a 5 inch engine speed, which is just in the corner there, hopefully that's visible. And uh, obviously with that speed, that's the maximum that can do. However, there are extra rules to cover additional speed boosts and stuff that you can do by assigning the command points. So there's command points that can be assigned. Here's a little command pip which I'll put on the counter there that's essentially assigning a command pip at the command phase you'd assign it to a particular ship in the game. So we, we've game set up, so that's only taken... I mean, it's really quick, isn't it? It takes about five hours set up. So, yeah, that's it. The game itself is about an hour long. Good, classic. Let's all go home now, then. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. it. Time to pack up. Time to pack up. So we'll start the turn sequence with our command roll. So that's a D6 plus one, and the plus one is for your... Um, Command ship. So roll the number. Oh. So I've got six plus one command pips, and so I'm just using these small counters as, as command pips, probably not visible from there. But one, two, three, four, five, six plus my one. We've now got, got a B in here. We've got a B in the garage. It's a big one. And the size of that? <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna it's come on the to attack. The it's on the attack. It's definitely... What is getting picked up on the camera? It is getting picked up. It's a comet fucker. My goodness. <laughs> it knows it's on cam. Oh man, if it lands on oh, there, go, if on, that, go on, land on the <laughs> ship. <laughs> so I think I've got a small table at the end here, um, which gives you a reference of those command points and what you can do with them. So here they go. You've got an initiative gamble, so we're just about to roll initiative. And since we're so close, we've got some combat just about to happen on the table there. I'm going to use three of mine, three of my command pips, to um, gamble on my initiative, which means I assign three command pips and it gives me a plus three to my initiative roll, because I really want to win the initiative this turn. Mm -hmm. uh, but other assignments I might want to make include stoking the fire, which adds plus three movement to an airship. Um, you can use a group activation, so up to three airships can activate at the same time. They need to be of the same or similar class. You can repair if your airship has a repair function. Outpipes, which is essentially an old naval term to represent you, you throw your pipes out, you put your pipes out and get back down to work, it means that you re-roll two gun uh, shooting dice that fail when you, when you roll your attack for that ship that turn. Um, Screening is allows you to use a smaller ship to screen a bigger one, so you can kind of absorb down. Um, so here's here's my roll. So I've got a four. And I have got, a five. But I've got plus three on mine, up to seven, and you've not added any command to yours. So I, I get the I get the win on the initiative. So it means I'll be activating a, an airship first. Uh, but just before you do that, you assign your command. So I'm going to uh, try and bring up my the plan is to try and bring up one of these airships at the back, put a command point on that for extra speed. I may want to boost this one's... Oops, that one's not perfectly straight on there. Um, I'll probably boost the fire on one of these ones nearer the front, so I'm going to put a command point on there. And you can put up to three command points on each one, because okay. they can do uh, repair actions and various other things. And it doesn't matter like how big the ship is or anything like that. Do you know um, I mean? It like, does. It... Usually like, bigger ships are more complicated, so you could add more things like... Yeah, it does in terms of if I go to one of the cards, so we can see a card page. Here's the card page, and we can say here's the Nalbium, which is the carrier, uh, which is the large carrier we've got in, in this game. And if you have a look, 
it's got three repair boxes at the top here and the thing to remember with that is that if I've assigned one of those command pips and I want to use it for repair action you're going to exhaust one of those three boxes when you use it and get a D3 repair done to the hull that you've removed on these damage points down here. So otherwise I'm going to put one on my carrier anyway and I'm going to put one on one of these uh, airships at the back here as well. Just get them all lined up even though um, I shouldn't really be moving them at this point because they should already be uh, sorted out. So Richard you're just assigning yours so you can yep. put one up front there. Um, where else do you want to put them? Um, you've got one of the smaller ships that you've got here as well on view. I do, which are quite I'm nice. just trying to check them out to see how They're fast right they are. Right at the edge of the camera view. They're there. Fast, 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 fast. Right, so here we are. Tape measure. I know this airship has a 9 inch movement, it's a fast one. Um, I've also, it's not, it's not got any main guns, it's only got um, uh, medium guns and small guns. So I'm going to bring those to bear as best I can on this ship in front. You don't pre-plan the movement, so I know this has got up to nine inches, you just move up to nine, so it's not a, it's it's kept nice and simple, so you're not having to map out how fast you're going every turn and then keep the same steam or anything. So I'm just going to move that six inches of its um, total nine, and uh, that's it. Now the firing phase, so I've moved it, I shall fire, and I'm going to pick my dice, so got this very large bucket of dice. So I can see on this airship it has six of the six of the short medium range which I put in the bucket. Lose one from the process. And it has sorry those were the small guns. Six of the small guns and it has seven of the medium guns. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there we are, in the bucket, and it's going to fire upon the German airship beside it. We're not using the altitude rules in this uh, simple, simplified quick overview, but what's your airship's name? 56? 56. 56 the... <coughs> Karlsruhe. Right, yes. That's that the one. Karlsruhe, the German ship. Uh, I think they're just about at the edge of the uh, camera view there, which isn't great. But um, four inch range, that means it's at the closest range. So I shall roll the dice and we shall work through what the damage is going to be. So again, simplified, we've got basically all of the coloured dice in one roll. So I can easily identify, you know, what are the small guns and what are the big guns. First thing I know that um, of note is that the smaller um, class the smallest gla class guns on deck are these yellow ones and they only have a range of up to 10 inches obviously I'm very close at the moment firing there so I remove anything that isn't a six so essentially they only hit on a six up to 10 inches so I've got two hits from the uh, short range and the mediums have done extremely poorly all those ones and twos and a three which is no good but we do have uh, a four, but that's still not a hit because at close range with a medium, it's a five or a six. Uh, so that's not good enough. So no hits with those medium guns, two hits with the small guns. Now I get to re-roll those because those have rolled a six, so you've got the exploding dice little situation and nothing. So I've done two points of damage to that airship. So there's my target, the Carl Shrew. Oh, put it in front of that. That's a bit more like it. So there's the Carl Shrew, and I've just done two damage to it. Fill in the boxes. So essentially, as you work on, you might get to one of these minus points on the on the card. When you get to the minus point, try and do it without any light on it. That minus one would apply to the speed and to each class of uh, weapon on this Carl Shrew airship. And just as a quick note, it's got a speed of eight, I can see up there, so it's quite a fast ship as well. So that was the first damage uh, of, of the game. So slowly wearing it down. I mean, that's generally the idea, is that every point of damage that we've just done, yeah, every point of damage that's going in is basically 
am doing uh, doing a, a point of damage on there. There's no saving throw. Um, it just slowly grinds it down. Uh, is, the, is the plan. So it feels like this has become the de facto rolling area over here. Yeah, I'd say so because we've got like the biggest. Because there's no the room, and, and and also it does allow you to see the rolling. Although I could see it was slightly out of focus. Um, drag that out of the way, and you can see that. There's the airship I've just fired, and I've used a token just to represent the fact that that's fired, and I now know that I'm not going to make a mistake, especially for larger fleets. And back to just what I was explaining again there with the um, movement, as in, essentially, I've moved and fired that one, and now it's your turn, so it's like I go, you go kind of thing. Okay. You can use that command point to move up to three ships at once, so... Okay. That's one way to group move, but if you're playing a larger game, I would uh, essentially... Uh, Where would you allocate that point if it was going to be used for that? Oh, if you're going to group move, you'd allocate it to one of the ships in the middle of a set, and okay. you've got that four inch range again, Okay. where you'd have the ship in the middle, would essentially then be able to drag with it two other ships of a similar class either side as a single move. Okay. So you'd sort of, it would be moving as a squadron in one go, like a wing of ships moving at one at one time. Right. And you're using that command point allows you to do that, which just boosts your fire output for the smaller ships. Okay. But your ship is in my side arc. One more inch. Yeah, slight turning. Yeah. Okay. So, and then we have these Imperial Skies sort of firing arc as you can see you just put it on the front there and you can see clearly that um, that airship is well within that uh, turning uh, firing arc along here so you're in the broadside range okay. and you've used that command point that you had on there yep. to basically do the extra movement to get you a little bit closer in maneuver wise okay so now I want to shoot let's take the card with us yeah oh yeah you can go at the front yeah I'll give you the guide so essentially, you're only you're six inches away. So every so gun, so I can use every gun, axe, right? Is at its maximum. There's not like a minimum range on some weapons or anything like no, that. No, you can use every gun, and um, yeah, whack those dice. You got all the dice in there? Yes. So if you move them out of the way, make some room. Is that going to be on? Yeah, that's better. All right. So basically, the thing to note is with the the yellow, which are the small ones, they only ever hit on a six within that 10 inch range. And you've got one six, which is the Imperial Skies logo there. So I pull those away. The mediums are going to be hitting on sixes or fives. Yeah. So everything else is a miss. Oh, a six there, and then that missed. And the big guns are going to, are going to hit on four, five, or six. So, right. So you've got. Four definite damage hits, and then you've got three more with a six, but you can re-roll those. Okay, so here they go. So um, four is nothing, no, three is nothing, no. three is nothing. Okay. So a total of seven damage points. Yeah. On my ten. Okay, so you've just done seven points of damage to my ship, which is number ten here. Okay. So uh, you can fill those in for me. So where do I start? Do I start, start at the top left. Top left. And work to the right. One, two, three, four, five, six. Suck it. Minus one. Yeah. Seven. seven. So you've got me down a, a level there in terms of a minus one. And that minus one applies to my speed. It applies to my guns as well. So my medium guns will be at six. And my small guns are going to be at five now. And also... It's nearly half of my uh, damage knocked out as well, which isn't great. So just a quick overview of that scene so you can see it. The clear ruler. The clear ruler. So yeah, so can, this German vessel has done a nice broadside up against my um, British ship here. And I've marked out that number 10. Um, it's down to nearly half its strength already with that damage that you've done there. And now I'm using a marker here. to show that... Uh, 50 has been used. Yes, yeah, so you're just marking that out. Right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my big airship back down here, which is um, number 8, which is my Britannia. Actually, I haven't put sleeves on those. 
Anyway, so um, I'm going to move the Britannia and I'm just going to double move it up. Um, no, actually I may do a single move. Yeah, I'm going to do a single move. Like yourself, I've got a command pip on there which I'm going to give myself the plus three movement with. Good plan. Um, so essentially I'm going to use the D-class ruler. So I did seven inches using normal movement and which it would normally move up to eight but with a plus three from the stoke the fire it can go up to eleven so with seven done I've got another four left to do so one two three four so that brings to bear some of my um, broadside and again I'll just check the uh, check that to see where it is yep you're in broadside there your uh, your main ship that's just come forward and that seems like a reasonable target to me. I'm actually, you measure from the um, post to post and you are actually just out of my 10 inch, which okay. means my small guns, the yellow type dice, can't bring to bear on okay. you. So um, I'll just show the, the situation in terms of that uh, distance. So there we go, we've got the Britannia she's going to fire against uh, your what's that man tuffel yeah but i just measured the distance between the two and they're not quite 10 inches so in fact i've got these perspex sticks have uh, which i've had them made in 10 20 and 30 inches for the three range and if i measure post to post i was literally just out and it's it's nearly touching but it's it's about a quarter of an inch or so short of you so I can't use my yellow class weapons and if I just go to that uh, Britannia we can see the Britannia has uh, four small dice for that one six for the medium ten big guns so it's pretty powerful so 16 dice overall ten of the red dice and six of the small so ten big guns two four Six, eight, ten, and six medium. One, two, three. So, up, see how much damage I can do. That looked like a pretty poor roll uh, to me. I've got nothing. Nothing, because I'd need fives uh, on the medium. Well, I'd need sixes on the medium actually. Nothing, nope. nothing, nothing, Five nothing for medium guns. Um, and it's four, five. Oh no, it's just fives and sixes for the for the big guns. Oh, it's no, it's just, not. It's three. No, it's it's four, fives, and sixes. It's four, fives, and sixes, but that not only at very close range. Because I'm now out of yeah. medium range. Yeah, so the yeah. big guns. For the, are, so for the smallest range, for the smallest range, hits on sixes. For the medium range, mm. fives and sixes. Yeah. For the long range, four, five, sixes. Yes, but it depends on what range you're at. If, oh really? Yes it does, yes. So this is the uh, medium range ruler and when you're out at medium range within the 20, yeah. the medium gun will only hit on a 6. It's only when it comes into its closer range of 10 oh, inches, geez. it hits on a okay. 5 or 6. Right, good. The same we've got this all out of the way, we've got this out the way now. <laughs> but yeah, basically when you're uh, firing at the extreme range, which is 30 inches for the big guns, yeah, yeah. And you, hit on you only hit on a six, but under 20 inches, it will hit on a five or six on the big guns, and the big guns will hit on a four, five or six within okay. the 10 inches. Okay. So they get more damage as they get closer. Yeah, yeah. But essentially, I've only rolled three hits um, because I haven't got any, uh, it's not going to hit on a four at that range, and only on fives and sixes with the big guns. But I've got two that I can re-roll, see if I can get another. And the re-roll, I did get a five, which is a hit. But it's just a normal hit and you don't roll again unless it was a six. Yep. So I'm guessing I start up here. Yes, four hits. One, two, three, four. Okay, so that's barely anything. I've scratched the paintwork on the side of the hull there. And, um, yeah, that's pretty pretty poor from my Britannia. Only getting four hits on those dice is, is not great. But what I could do now, just for fun, is what we tend to do is maybe put some smoke on the target to see that I've actually uh, I've done some damage on you there. So Do you want to retroactively 
do the other two ships. Well, we could do, yeah. That one took quite a bit more damage, so I might want to mark that up. Oops. Yeah, maybe that's a sign of what's going to happen next. It's going down. Yeah, so... Not too bad. First initial encounter. The, obviously, the one key thing to say at this point is that we are uh, playing a game where the um, models started very close to each other because yes. we're trying to bring things onto the table in a way where we can get straight into the action. And normally you'd be a bit further out, maybe doing long longer range fire, so you're not straight in with a heavy heavy damage instantly. Okay. Okay, and then I am going to use... Oh my goodness, it's such a short range. <laughs> the small ships. No, I was going to use one of the. I was going to use the blimp, um, but I'm going to yeah, go. It doesn't have fun. I'm going to go it's, for. It's bit, blimps tend to be slow, which is one thing. Yeah. But they can turn on the spot, uh, which is very useful. So I'm going to use the. I'm going to use fifty-four. Mm-hmm. Which is him. Which is this. Which okay. is another word that I can't pronounce. That is a colm. You're going to use the colm. Right. Good. Um, he's got a turning arc of D. So I'm gonna... Okay. So D from the front. I'm going to go four inches. And then I'm going to take the tape measure. And move the rest. Uh, what was it? Seven. So I've got another three inches. Yeah. Okay. Now, what's it like with like pre-measuring and stuff like that? You can pre-measure any time. Can I? Oh yeah. my goodness! So, so you just got to find out what you're firing. So, mm. so that's a twenty-inch Perspex ruler. Yeah. Which means that means your medium guns are going to be effective out to that range. Yeah. And the little tiny dimpy ruler that you've got over there. Yeah. That is, is the ten. ten. So, so no, that's no what's... chance of any of that. No chance of using any of those. Um, and and again, the measurement is from your central column there. So rather than. Oh right. Those, yeah. But yeah. You've yeah, got nothing it. that you can um, damage with that, unfortunately. Okay. Um, so I've still got my command point. Can I use that to like boost damage? Like you can. Damage? Yeah, yeah. You can out pipes, which means you get to re-roll two dice that miss when okay. you're shooting. Right. Naturally, they can be of any class, but you probably want to re-roll the big guns that yeah. miss because yeah, they have a much more high, better chance of hitting. Okay, so going so down, down here. So down to the uh, actual model. So this is the Coln here. And so, what? What's your target? How um, far out is it? You're gonna I'm hit... going to fire at the small ship because okay, so if you smash me, away. then at least I took down one ship. So it's a moral victory. Yeah, that's true. So yeah, number <laughs> ten, you're going to fire at. Yeah. Which is the one that's already taken damage, as we know in the previous couple of rounds. Okay. Um, okay. Can you go back over to my card and then read out the dice for me? Yeah, so you've got eight of the big guns and five medium. This is a pretty big, big, big ship, really. I'm going to flip that over as well, three, just four, to look at it and tell you what it is. Six, seven. Yeah, so this eight is of a, the big guns? It's a, it's a heavy cruiser, essentially, which has got 28 hull points. Turning ruler is the D. And eight of the big guns, five medium guns. Okay. And I need sixes for the medium and fives and sixes for the big guns. Yep. Okay, so. Hmm, so it looks like I've got nothing. Nothing on the medium guns. On the medium guns. And then just a, three hits on the big guns. On the big guns, yes, yeah, so but I get to re to get to reroll two. Reroll of those. two missed because you've used the outpipes command point. And oh, one more. One more hit. So that's a pretty good use of that extra command point to squeeze four damage onto this airship, which is my which is down as number ten. Starting, no so, more stat. Yeah, it's been pretty badly hit now, to be fair. I've only got four more boxes left, so this is where on my next turn 
if I win or lose the initiative, I'll be wanting to try and move that first. But she does have one. She does have one uh, repair box, which could be used if I assign it a command point to use that repair box next turn. It is recording again. We are on air and we're visible. Sweet. Welcome back. We've uh, just been playing around because we ran out of disk space when we were recording and now we're back in action again. Uh, we have taken, while we were backing up and getting things organised on the hard disk, we've taken a couple of turns. Yep. Okay, so ready. I'm using 55 now. Okay, um, so that is um, an SA-15. Yep. Um, I am shooting at your number two. Um, I checked the range. Yeah. Oh. Is it? Am I, are you within the, the short and range? I am well within the short range. Yeah. In the side arc, so I get all the dice. Okay. Um, on the card, it says that I get six um, short range and two medium range. So I've got that in my tub. Okay. Now I'm going to throw them down. And they're all going to hit. No. So you got um, oh, two sixes that both sixes. hits, which both will hits. be two re-rolls. Um, and then no mediums. Because of the exploding dice on the sixes, so you just roll those both again. Three and a two, no good. I think Very so just cool. the two points against your number two ship. Now let's find the pen. Here it is, got it. Um, oh, it's fresh. Yeah. Not anymore. And since we took a break, I lost this one, so hence the uh, watery marker. Okay. Well, that's what so. you get because you basically concentrated most of your fire yeah, on that one that's it. airship, didn't you? I and mean, if we look at the spread of damage over on your side, I've been spreading where I've been shooting. The Carl Shrew here has, you know, it's down to a minus one. Yeah. So your Mantuffel and your Colm just. Really, just some scratches on the paintwork, but uh, yeah. Rantoffel is pretty close though. Yeah, it's pretty yeah, close to a there. threshold, isn't it? It'll yeah, be on yeah, a minus yeah. one threshold. Any one so. of your ships could do two points of damage on me, right? Yeah, easily, easily, yeah. So here we are, the action as it stands, with all our mess around it as well. I guess another tactic would be to try and destroy a ship before it actually gets to its turn. So if I had aimed for one of your ones at the back. Um, that would, like, it would, it, would, it would take it out because what I did is I, is I targeted the first one that you moved. So he'd already done his turn, you know. True. But if you had gone for one that was, like, further to the back or whatever, then it's more likely that it's not going to get to have a go. That is true, yeah. Right. Go or for or the at one. least be on negative before yeah. it's, it's You know, fine. if I've, yeah, if you're aiming at one that's not activated yet. You know the chances are. I'm sure. I'm sure you will just activate at that point. If you're, if, if I'm in range, you you're going to be in range. So it gets more tactical, it. right? Yeah. It does get more tactical, especially when you run out of when you're going low on hit points on there. Well, hit damage hull points even, not hit points. Yeah, I mean, I didn't. You got that one down of mine before I'd even had a chance to use the repair function as well, mm -hmm. which I would have done next turn. Yeah. I put one of my command points on it to try and just bring it back from the brink. Um, yeah. But um, didn't get that opportunity. Sometimes that can help, just, you know, you get one or two points left and bring it back. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. just keeps it in action for another turn. Yeah, and you were explaining that, that they've got, like, X amount of boxes for repairing. Um, but is that, is that, that's all it gets. So if it's got three boxes there, there's three boxes over the it's entire three game. three repairs for the entire game. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah, three boxes, yeah, so that's all it gets. Yeah, and the idea with that is otherwise you'd end up in a situation where you'd have just repairing every turn. Yeah, and, yeah, you know, that's, that's it. No good, is yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, and then, and then it's basically the luck of your command point roll yeah. as to like who wins. Who wins? Yeah. So basically, by making it exhaust when you've used up the repair, just basically makes it uh, a little bit fairer rather than things just hanging around mm -hmm. forever. So you've got three small ships. Uh, I've run out. Of, my movement's finished, and you, you're end, you've ended up with three left to activate because you, by sort of by the nature of the way the situation is, I've ended up with um, uh -huh. uh, less. But I activation is back with me at the moment. And I've got some fighters, and the fighters they have slightly different movement. They can, uh, I believe, they move up to ten inches. I just need to get my fighter. Actually, I didn't get my fighter cards out. Now that is that is a bit daft, isn't it? Uh, but if I do find a fighter. 
um, in any of the factions. They've all got fighters. Yes, here we go. Basically, they have the 12-inch movement, but they're not held to any specific ruler because they're considered oh, to be they can much be, more maneuverable, right? And yeah. They're not having to follow any kind of set path. I mean, they might as well. So I can go anywhere I like. So basically, I up to 12 inches, I can. So. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And they only have the yellow class dice so they've only got the short range up to 10 inch range right yeah yeah but you move them in any direction you like they're just okay. like little gnats that fly around so I'm, i know i can see you've got three airships here that haven't fired so you're number 58 yeah i'm going to take six dice you get one dice per uh, aircraft because this is actually a, a wing of although you can't see it but you soon will be able to see it when i flip the camera Okay, yeah, so uh, I think I mentioned game. earlier on, I'm unfortunately, I only have my German fighters, so even though it's been launched from a British um, uh, Ship. cruiser, uh, sorry, even aircraft carrier might be a better word to yeah. say, I've launched it from that aircraft carrier and uh, I've moved their range up to 12 inches to target one of these small, uh, small airships down here. I'm going to go at number 58, I think. But as I was mentioned, the... The fighters get one dice per aircraft in the group, and they have six, even though it's only represented by three on the base. Right. A group of fighters is six. So for every point of damage you get, you're getting one less dice. That's right. Okay. Um, but so as soon as they take damage, they start reducing the numbers of dice. Ah, oh, now here we go. A little factoid, and I'd forgotten this because I haven't played for a while. But when you've got the light fighters, they do have the normal sixes in up to 10 inch range. Mm. But when you're within four inches, okay, okay. it's fives or sixes okay. to do one point of damage. Otherwise they'd be very poor really with yeah. only the yellow dice. Yeah. Uh, so up to four inches, they roll five or sixes when they're attacking um, another group of fighters or a smaller ship. Um, and the fact that um, some people were concerned that it's a small fighter, it's only kind of like machine gun type fire on there. But the idea is, is when they're coming down, they're strafing against the the boat, the ship. They're doing damage to potentially to crew on deck, mm -hmm. light equipment on deck. But also back in this day, they would have dropped little bombs over the side. So timing wise, if there were a couple of them in a, in one of those fighters, they'd fly over, drop something on the deck, a small bomb, as well as doing a strafing run, which is why they can do any kind of damage against these heavy hulls because okay. they're just dropping things. But yeah, that's a note to point out. Yeah, within four inches you get fives or sixes. Okay, so now that I know they're slightly more slightly more dangerous effective. when they're up. Well, they like you've got another set of them that you can drop out. Yeah, I've got another set. I was going to launch. I've got them over here. Um, so yeah, I may next turn probably launch those off the is carriers. There, is, there, is there a limit? Like, could you have could you have dropped them both in one turn? In fact, yes. With fighters, the carrier can launch up to two a turn or land one and launch yeah. one. So it's two flights or wings of fighters can either land or take off in each uh, turn. I only launched one, so I could have landed one or I could have launched two if I wanted. Yeah. The other thing is is the fighters themselves, obviously they do a D6 damage per fighter in the wing. All the wings are six. So you'll be rolling those six dice for damage. But as soon as they take damage, you take off a dice so basically their damage is equal to their damage output so as soon as it's taken three hull point damage that's essentially three fighters that have been knocked out so you'd be down to just rolling three dice to attack if you'd um, lost three damage on that wing okay. of fighters and I think I mentioned before when you're within the four inches unlike any other rules normally you've got 10 inch range for the yellow dice type yeah and they only damage on six but with you within four with a fighter they damage on a five or six. Okay. Just gives them that little bit of extra edge because just the yellow dice isn't very effective. Yeah. And what's the benefit of landing them? Uh, they completely repair. So okay. even if you're only down to one fighter, that would be one damage output on that wing of fighters. When you when you're placed within four inches of the carrier, they would repair on the at the end of that turn. Right. They land at the end of their activation. So as long as I've got them within four inches of the carrier, they'd automatically land if I choose them to, and next turn they would relaunch at the full quota. And it doesn't mean every fighter is suddenly repaired and made perfect, but it just means, generally speaking, there's a kind of depth, the mechanic of them being able to 
bring up spares from the uh, yeah. and other other aircraft on the carrier. So yeah, that uh, and it doesn't happen that often. I mean, I haven't played very often. People have land fighters and, mm -hmm. and made them take off again. But I wanted yeah. that in there. Some a mechanism where you could land them on the ground airstrip or on a on a carrier and get repairs done. Okay, good. So I've uh, so you're you're going to yeah, move all yours go. in one yeah. go. Yep. Yeah. Um, okay, so I've got the smallest of arcs that I can turn around in. I wonder if I can get him in. So I'll get uh, I'll zoom in on this then. You zoom in. Nope. There I am. <laughs> you yeah. try to find it. There we go. So you're using the small um, A A class of turning circle because the small patrol boats and those little destroyers do use that size. Yep, and then I'm going to... I did. Sorry, go, go on. on, go on, go on, go on, yeah. go on, go on. Okay, so yeah, we're going to move them all together and then do all the shooting together, so... Just going to move this boy down to here, make sure he's in the side arc. Um, and then since I can pre-measure, I'm just going to leave him where he is. He can get in there. Right, so hopefully now I don't destroy it on the first, <laughs> the first ship and waste the go of two. Yeah. You guys, so yeah, pick your dice out for those then. So, what, what ones are you shooting? It's just these smaller, it's just these. Um, so, you've got uh, the SA 15s 15. and the BA 97s. Yep, I'll roll it at the end. Okay, so that's that's it. That's <laughs> it. Nothing else is okay. So, now I get to roll another six yellows. Thing. Super, super upsetting. Goodly. Okay, so I managed to take out a whopping one. <laughs> one, <laughs> one, one, one of my fighters. I don't have my fighter card out, but I, I you know, we'll, we'll put a counter on here, just to say that it's down to five on my uh, on my fighters. The fighter cards are quite simple, but they do have six damage boxes, which makes them easy to track. Should have got that out, but. Did not. Did not get a six over here. Um, done when that? you were talking about doing the group move, yeah, is there a limit? To, did you say it was three ships that you could do, it, or three is everything with four? Three ships okay. within four of each other, so that you could, yeah, by placing one on those group of three, you're able to do that. And I shall place some around here. He's. I'm having a look where I've got some damage, oh, and I can see that I've got very light damage, really, anywhere. Oh, there was my other one of my tokens, which I didn't use. And you can put multiple on. You right? can put two on, so you could actually do the outpipes for the extra re-roll of the damage. Yeah. Or speed up so, at the so, same time. Yeah. So, if you... Right. So, if I put three on this ship... Right, mm. and I decided to move him first, and I was going to do the group move. Mm. Do the other? Do I need to put command points on the other ships if they also want to power up their attacks? And yes, you would. You yeah, I mean? you would do. But I would just bear in mind that the putting a command point on to power up an attack to do the out pipe so you get re rolls. Or, yeah, or only gives you two. But it's always worth putting those on the bigger bigger ships because yes. you're only going to get ever one little re-roll of a C-class, of a low-class weapon, Yeah. whereas if you put it on a big ship, you're going to put the main guns are going to get a re-roll, which is much more effective in terms of damage. Okay. 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 Allocated. Now we roll for initiative. Initiative, yeah. So I've actually spent all my command points, so I've As got have this. I. It's just going to be a straight roll. Don't do oh, it. Oh, yes, come on. Oh, One place, it's all two. he needs. It's all he needs. So you've you got the first action. The thing is, um, I haven't really got any airships that are um, at the end of their tether, so to speak. Most of them are pretty undamaged. Yeah. If I had one that was nearly ready to go, I'd be really worried about winning initiative because I'd want it to get his turn in uh, okay. first. Oh, it's between the sticks, isn't it? Right. So, what I'm going to do is a group move. Is a group move. 
There's one little thing about a group oh, move. Oh, you're about to stuff me. Uh, no, I'm not, but the group move is they're meant to make the same manoeuvre because they're moving as a, like a squadron. Right. So you would go, I'm going to move that set and they would make the same just kind of swooping manoeuvre. Okay. But I'm going to give you that because I didn't explain it to you because you've got one of yours. I wasn't planning um, on, do they have to be the same size ship or anything like that? Because what I was planning on doing was activating him and then moving him, him and him. Um... They have to be the same size within a certain. Um, is size that a rule that you just made up? It isn't then. a rule I've just made up, but I shall <laughs> talk about it. So yeah, having a look into that, essentially, when you want to do a group move, it's only up to class B that you can do. You can move up to class C, but they take two command points to move as a group because it's okay. a little bit more expensive manoeuvre to make and gives a higher damage output with class Cs. Yep. So these are class. A's and B's, so you're fine yeah. to mo activate these small three ones as a group as long as they're all within four inches of the one that's doing the command point. Okay. Uh, but you can't move a, a, a ship as big as this one. Okay. You can only move the smaller ones. Okay. Right. Okay, rethink then. <laughs> yeah. So I'm not going to do a group move. I'm going to move. Um... Well, you might still want to move those small, smaller vessels. I group. will. Because they get a lot more damage dice. Look, you're essentially, if you move those three small ones, yeah. you're totaling up all their small dice as, as a group, and they could bring them to bear against the single target. It's true. A bigger I mean, role. I, I mean, I did just do that, and they were they gave me all... One gave me all ones and twos. <laughs> ones and twos. All right, well, I guess I'll start with this turn, as mm. I did... Um, with <laughs> As I ended the last turn, with using these three... Mm. Oh no, I've got to move them two inches, right? They've all got to move at least two, two inches. inches. Any airship's got to move at least two inches. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, you can't what happens, if that, what happens if that puts me into like the arc of something else? You know what I mean? Well, that's just unfortunate if you've wanted to move them. But don't I just uh, stop before I hit that other... Yes. Um, uh, well, it, you don't stop, uh, but you would do if you hit the base. Yeah. You've got to, you've got to stop if, it, if that's the movement. So if it's two... I mean, this one can. This guy can get in there. Mm. This guy is going to get to the. Oh, excellent. Thank you, magnet. Oh yeah, that's the problem with magnets on the uh, the toppers is that they tend to connect to the rulers. Okay, and then with this guy, like, I mean, it's stick to stick, isn't it? So. Mm, mm, mm. Get in there. Get in there. Get in there. Need like a plastic headed <laughs> tape measure. Yeah, we'll try and make one of those. That's it. Oh my god, I've just I've just created a market. Quick, mm. no, don't put the video up. Yeah. Decided. Plastic headed. Plastic headed. Okay, right, so I've moved those three, so now it's gonna, I'm gonna do You're the gonna same turn as up. I did before. You're gonna shoot them all uh, at the same time. Um what have oh, I got? you moved three, so I moved three, got... so yeah. Just that fifty five isn't gonna get to move. Yeah, got quick. I've got you in camera. Oh good. Phew. Right. Yeah, because if you roll them all at once, it increases that chance of uh, critical damage. Yes, yeah. Well, if you well rolling the sixes at least, anyway. Oh, so he hits. Yeah, five right. or sixes on the orange. Yeah. Oh, and then an awful lot of. Oh, you got two hits there. Two crits. Two crits. Well, when I say crits, they're exploding dice. So you no, roll exploding again. Dice. I think that's it. You say so you re-roll just two dice. That's two more already than I got the last one. Yeah. No. no. Nothing. As usual. Nothing. But three three damage. Um, yeah, that's pretty good. That isn't um, that is so good. So we've already moved the dice which we have put in here. To say it was taken down to five. Mm. Three, so it's taken down to two. That's it, that go gun. Mm. So I've got basically my fighters are at strength two, so it's, they really are rather poor now. They're not going to do much good with that, and that would be okay. a reason to take them back and land them on deck at the end of the next turn. Or I could just shoot them and then mm, I could move and then I could shoot them, so they're ready to land if needs be. So my activation now, and I am going to move my bigger ship. Um, right. Um, so back yeah. over here, um, I'm going to do my eight, which is the Britannia. And I'm going to swing it round. It uses the D turning ruler. So I'll just pull it out of there. And it's got a move of eight. Eight, yeah, it's very fast actually. So I'll move it around there for five. And then I'm going to move it on with a tape measure. 
You can move through enemy ships as well with um, on the basis that they're at different heights. Yeah. But just a general thing. So five to there, another three brings me to this location. Oh, and it's got two command points on it. It has got two command points, so I could move a bit further actually. Yeah, I'm going to move. I'm going to use it for the the full steam ahead and give it another up to plus three, so that puts me in an even stronger position between your two battle cruisers there. So I have got ten. You may film me now. One, two, three, four, five. Ten big guns. Six medium bore and eight of the. Whoa! There's lots of small deck guns on that's this serious. one. This is serious, Boy. and I'm going to shoot the one that's closest to me. Your fifty. Right. So to start, I know the reds are four, five, or six to hit. So this is where you see with the big ships, we're really uh, our big oh my heavy God, hitters. Oh my God! He's smashing me. So. Six only on the yellow, so oh, I can see straight. Look at those the small guns have done really well. Three is no good, that's a hit. Uh, it's fives or sixes on the orange, uh, four fives or sixes on the small. Oh my god! So look at that damage, that's quite a that good is one. Brutal. I've got three re rolls on the yellow dice, I've got three re rolls on orange, medium guns, and one re roll on the, on the red. So I shall roll those for extra damage. Oh, right, there's another ridiculous. there's another six on the red, and nothing else from any of the others. Um, no, so I do get to re-roll another. But so this is the th third roll of a six re-roll. If this is a six, I do get your um, I do get a magazine explosion on you as well. No, on me. Yes. Oh, okay. Because if I roll three, um, three sixes on okay, the okay. recurrence, then you get a magazine strike on the target, and then and that would do a, a clean two d six damage to you. Bang. Two d six worth of damage. Two d six worth That's of damage. Crazy. It's basically a magazine strike. Yeah, but I didn't get that, so I count up what I've got. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen damage. Oh, on just you. the fourteen. Just the fourteen. So let's fill those in. I'm gonna have fun doing that. So that was on your man, man truffle. 14. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Just got you down to the minus 3. Brilliant. So when you activate that airship, though, you've got two, um, you've got two command points on there. Mm -hmm. And you could uh, use one of those to use one of the repair functions. Okay. Which would bring you back over the threshold of the minus 3 into the minus 2. Right, you roll a d3 damage uh, re uh, repaired. So that's me. That's my activation of that airship. But it's quite a good one. I'll mark it up to say that it's, it's done. Understatement. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay, round the back. That's it. Going in. Going round two. Rubbish dog and moving bark, stuff. Dog barking out there. Yeah, loves it. So you're going to fire now then? Yes, I'm going to fire. So you're going to fire use... on my Britannia. I'm going to use one of my fire. command points, right? Yeah, go for it. For repair. Oh, you're using the one that's. I'm taken... using. I'm using the one that hasn't done any damage. damage. So effectively, I've wasted a command point. Ah, oh, so you're putting it on. This is the colon, is it? Yeah. Fifty-four. Yeah. yeah. So you're going to use the command point on. The attack, so I get two attack, re rolls. Two re rolls. Okay, so yeah, spend you spend that command point for two re rolls coming okay. up. Okay, all right. So now, oh, if I you need... go over to the dice, I'll, yep. tell, I'll tell you what you need, and cool. I shall tell the viewers at the same time. So we're up here. We've got the coal. There's his mantuffle that has basically nearly gone. So he's using the coal, and it has eight of the main bore, big bore guns, five medium, and three small. Okay, and I am in a little range, as 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 were you. Yeah, short range. Well in there. You're within the ten inches. So you're rolling everything. Go. For it. Oh, that's another. 
Oh, almost lost that one. Oh, almost lost a six. You almost lost a six. You got two sixes there. I got two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a third one. Yeah. There's a fourth one. Um, got a five. Oh. It's fives and sixes on the orange. Yeah. Sixes on the right. yellow. So your small ball yellows have done nothing. Fives and sixes. And they've done nothing. So. So your re rolls are four red re rolls. Yep. And two orange. Two orange. Mm. Okay, so that's another. God, these rolls have been a lot better this then, eh? That's a hit, five. That's a hit, of six. six. The rest are nothing. Six and nothing. So and I get got one, one more. red. Now, this red, if this is a six, you've got a magazine hit on me. Yeah, come on. You need a six. Do it for me. No. No. Still a hit. <laughs> okay, so I don't think I quite got that 14 that you got last time. One, two, three, four, five, oh, six, that's seven, a, that's eight, a lot nine, ten, eleven. In. Eleven points to the. Britannia. That has already fired. Wait, no, don't do it. You ain't got a case on it. Oh, Whoa. look at that. Almost went straight onto the, straight onto the naked the card. Oh, get to open a fresh pack. Mmm, feels so good. <laughs> <laughs> right, how many do you need? Right, right, right. Oh, this is what it looks like when you put a card in the sleeve. This is what it looks like when a card goes in the sleeve. Very late in the game, when we should have prepared, prepared this earlier. I did say we could have spent an hour putting cards in sleeves. Cards in sleeves. But, but now they're done, they're done. So, how many points was that? 11, did you 11 say? 11 points, yeah. So. 1, 2, 3, I went the wrong way on the second it did. row. It didn't but matter. It didn't matter. Oh, okay. it's down minus one. Okay, so well, it's my activation now, isn't it? It is. I'm looking forward to this. So I'm going to pass you that back so that I can just show you what I'm going to do. Yeah. So I need something big to to bring to bear on the guy that's taken some damage. And the biggest thing I've got left is probably, that's got seven main guns. Hmm, the Albion. It's that guy there, the Albion. Yeah, I'm going to swing in with the Albion. That's the carrier. And so... So that's number four on the map? Yep, number four up there. It's a it uses the E class ruler actually, which I happen to not have around. There it is. Just a gentle curve around here. Um, in fact I'll just move it three inches on the on the ruler there, and then it's got a total of five. It'll do another two. So that has to line up with the front. Yeah, you are in. I am in. You're in. So that's it. I use that for the uh, extra steam ahead. To, uh, that's my command pit gone. So it does okay. mean now, range-wise, I am in the close range. So I'll be using all of my eight small dice and eight medium. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So roll those. So obviously only sixes on the yellow, but they're coming up so good for me. And only fives and sixes on the orange. So there we go. So, but nice set of re-rolls. Three dice to go and no good. So three damage on, on that airship, which was your 50, 15. which is this guy. One, two, three. Almost <sighs> out. It's almost out, but not enough. The blimp, yeah. Um, he only has. Yeah, so the blimp's got quite a lot of good, decent weaponry, hasn't it? Really. So. Yeah, it does have eight big guns. Right. So he's going to be on the. Oh, he's got the tiny little turning circle, isn't he? Because he's. Um, yeah, because it's a blimp. A blimp it it right? does have a Slow B moving. class turn. Yeah. Okay. But you're not going to use quite the. Yeah, yeah, that is the B. Hmm. It does mean because it's a blimp, it's slow moving. It can pretty much turn on a die. Com actually, compared to the uh, normal airships, they don't have to do the minimum two inch move. Or like oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Fighters have a minimum of three inch move they need to make, but um, 
Yeah. Okay. okay. So where's that going to fire? It's going at number. It's going at the guy who keeps on. Oh, at the carriers around. At the carrier. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, what's the what's the range? Are you within the? Yep. Minimum range. I Definitely. Mean, all the way in. So on if that. you want to get your dice ready, you will going be for rolling. It. Four small. Five medium guns and eight big ball. Explode! Right, this one. None of you boys. Uh, five, it's fives six, and sixes on the sixes. orange medium. It, it's actually four fives or sixes on the uh, big ball guns. Number six. That's a hit. The rest are misses. The rest are misses. And you okay. have a, a re-roll of one of each one kind of, each. of plot. Yeah. dice. Nothing. No, yeah. Oh, that's a four. That's four. a hit. Yeah. Gosh. Just one point. Okay. Two. Total points damage. Eight. So that is my Albion. Eight damage. It takes it past its first threshold. It's starting to grind it down. A bit worried about that. Britannia's taking some damage. Right, I've got, I've got to now. I've got to try and take out that um, that shit that you've got to damage your man frontal. Yeah, yeah, he's almost man gone. Man tuffle, sorry, even I keep wanting to say man froto, which is a brand of camera tripod. And so, yeah, let's go for it. Uh, this number two here that's going to need to do it. He has um, is a destroyer nine inch, and it uses the B. B class, so he can swing around quite nicely, um, or just go straight ahead. I think I'll just go straight ahead and just be as close as possible. I think it would be handy if we had um, markers also on the bases for the purpose of like See showing these being games. Done. Yeah, because then it'll be a lot easier for people to relate to show that it's been moved. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so moved, yeah, you could say that's moved. Two, three. So. So no, I'm at close range, so the orange will damage on five or six. So only two. Oh, three. Oh, that was a miss. Everything else is a miss because they only do on sixes. Okay, so I've got two orange re rolls. Fives or sixes. Oh, it's a six. And that's a miss, but I re roll again because it's exploding dice. Another six. Oh, it's a damage. One, two, three. Four, five. I know that is enough. Yeah. One, two, three. It's gone. It didn't get to do its repair. Um, That's it. It's blown out of the water. It. So Back what I would do point. is either use one of these or some other counter just to show that it's gone. It's lost its command points as well if it hasn't used them. I so, didn't use them at all no. because I didn't want to take the <laughs> the damage like deficit. Yeah. And now I don't get to use them at all. Yeah. So that wasn't wise. So into the graveyard there. Okay, so yeah, that's moving quite well. Now we know. So there we go. So yeah, uh, rudely interrupted. I'm sure I keep having to move further over every time. Every time. I think he's probably close to me. Yeah. Or yeah. So um, that was a kind of a part one of the game because we're not going to keep on going because I was teaching you. It was your first game of it, wasn't it? Yeah. So um, we've got to. We got through a couple of turns. And uh, a couple of ships have been taken out, as you can see on the little camera there. I've just taken out one of your battle cruisers, uh, which was a rather pleasing moment. And you'd knocked out one of my smaller ships earlier. So yeah, it's it's been fun. I think but we'll we'll play again another day to because we'll be speedier. Yeah, we'll yeah. A bit also, we didn't it. we didn't do anything like there was. You said there's extra rules. There was the altitude rules. Altitude. We should and there do was that like time. boarding actions. Boarding actions you can do to try and take over an airship. We should try that next time. Okay. As well. Yeah. Mm. Good. Great. Um, so yeah. Well, thanks for playing. And uh, that was Imperial Skies here. And uh, probably also worth now we're wrapping up. Just noting that. Uh, we were messing about with different cameras. We've just got this set up in place in the garage after like some like eight weeks of cleaning and tidying to get all the rigs sorted in here. And that meant that halfway through we suddenly were moving the cameras into different positions and making a mess of it. Yeah. And then my, um, my solid state drive uh, SSD filled up after doing right in the middle of like 
filming and we probably lost 10 minutes or so of like the most vital oh, yeah, yeah. footage we had. <laughs> um, so we lost that and then we had to back up and then yeah, so lots of things we've had challenges with but we're, we're nearly there. So now we're going to pack up and thanks for watching. That's been Richard, I'm Robin and this was Imperial Skies and we'll be back again soon with another video. Uh, we've got lots planned so thanks very much for watching. I hope there's some sort of like quick reference sheets in this rule book. There are over there. I best go and get them. And <laughs> <laughs> I can't hear. Is my there a, like an, in this book? Does it have like a table of contents for quick referencing? At the back. At the back. I'll tell you what, the graphic designer who was hired to do this, Me? obviously a professional. Yes. That should be doing nothing but graphic design because they are so good at it. Yeah. <gasps> oh, it's all about the painting guides, that's all I care about. We've even got a weird little brass bender. I'll tell you that tool that I really do love of yours and I want it and I want all of them is the the punch for making the tiny little rivets and the tiny oh, little yeah. um bolt heads and stuff like that. I fucking love that thing.